From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. I shall never forget what happened, and I don't think you will either, and it's my first headline that I want to share with you. Falling meteor explodes over Russia. We are going to elaborate on that in just a moment. World revolution to institute a new world order and a new world religion. My, Jack has so much on his heart today. We are going to get right into all of this. And as I said, I don't think I'll ever forget hearing about what happened to our planet just recently. And of course, when the meteor burst into flames over Russia. Take a look. Planet Earth dodges one extraterrestrial punch, but gets struck by another. All right, we'll talk about that. Falling meteor explodes over Russia. But take a look at that headline on the right. Pew! Asteroid slips just past Earth. Now that's a 130,000 ton asteroid that went by the Earth, the narrowest of margins. Wow, just hours after what happened in Russia. And then, of course, this is a close encounter to say the least. Jack and I do enjoy going out for breakfast uh, sometimes, and uh, we have a favorite place to go for pancakes. And Sparrow Gift Takas is the manager of that pancake house. One Kirby's. Of the best. Kirby's, one of the best in our area. And when this happened, we went the next day, and he said, Dr. Van Impey, I couldn't believe what just happened in Russia and about what's just almost happened here with the asteroid. He said, is that in the Bible? I think, friends, everybody is wondering, did the Lord enlighten us about this in the Bible, Jack? Oh, very definitely, Rexella. And the Spiro, of course, is my friend, and so I love to explain Bible things to this great Greek Orthodox man. But Rexella, what happened in Russia is minor compared to what happened there in 1908 when an asteroid hit and it destroyed millions and millions of trees and acres of land. It was really something. We haven't had anything gigantic like that since then. But this thing was kind of minor in, by way of comparison for Russia. However, let me say that uh, when it hit, it affected 1,000 people as far as injuries were concerned and 4,000 buildings. But there was something else going on. And he mentioned this as well, this great asteroid. Get it, folks. It weighed 130,000 tons. I figured this all out. That's 26 million pounds. And had it hit, it would have been equal to 180 hydrogen bombs like the ones that fell atomically on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Oh, God help us that it didn't hit. But you know, we talk about closeness, 17,200 miles from hitting our Earth. Guess what? Rick and I are preaching to the whole world, but we're using the satellites in space, and they are 23,200 miles up there, and this asteroid was 6,000 miles beneath it. That's how near it was. And guess what's happening? Right now, our astronomers, our scientists are working diligently, say, because we've got to get a warning system because there are going to be more of these things hitting. They plan to have a warning system that will give everyone a chance to realize whether they should try to escape or not. And they'll have a one week period to warn. Now, is it in the Bible? The Lord Jesus, Luke 21, verses 25 and 26, he said, there should be signs in the sun, the moon, the stars, and space, and it'll be so frightening that men's hearts will fail them as they look for things that are coming to the path. But it's a sign that Christ is about to return because the very next verse, 27, says, Then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. That's the rapture. Come up hither. And we go up in the twinkling of an eye, 1 Corinthians 15, 52. Seven years later, we return with Jesus to the earth. And Rexella, 
Jesus went on to say, no, I got goose pimples on my duck bumps now. In verse 31 of that same chapter, when you see these things happening in space, you know that my kingdom is nigh. That prayer you've prayed for centuries. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, Matthew 6, 10. But know what? The generation that lives to see this shall not pass from the earth. This is the raptured generation. Well, you know, we've been discussing, friends, something very, very important. I think you recognize that Sharia law and the extenuating effect that it has on countries where it is observed. I'll tell you that it has a big effect wherever they observe it. Now, Jack has done extensive study. I've shown you some of the books that he has studied. But I'd like you to take a look at this book especially, and I have referred to it, Sharia, The Threat to America, an Exercise in Competitive Analysis. I'm going to stop right here, Jack, because I would like for him, if he would, to share once again some of the research that he has done. It's not off the top of his head, friends. He's done a lot of research. That's only one book of many. You know, we got a lot of these people and preachers saying, oh, this will never happen. Second Timothy 2.15 says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, but I did it for another reason because I want to be able to show you not only through the headlines, but through God's holy word that all these things are coming and coming very soon. Now, I have used the books of various individuals for Dr. Merck's, for Dr. Warren Smith's, and I have used uh, this great book where Excella just had as a picture on the stage, 20 of the leading admirals, generals, anti Islamic fighters, those who know what's going on and are taking a stand, scores of others, 1,500 quotes from men like Walid Shobat. Listen to Jesus in John chapter 16, verses 12 and 13. I have yet many things to say unto you, Jesus said, but you cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the Holy Spirit of truth, has come, he'll guide you into all truth. I awaken in the mornings and it's in my mind as I've been sleeping. The Holy Spirit is doing some great things that I've never understood before. It's all happening in the last two years. And every morning I pray, Ephesians 5, 18, Oh, Holy Spirit, fill me. Because He's enlightening my mind. He's showing me the things that are coming. He's giving me the call to be a prophetic voice to the world. I'm warning you. Get ready. 1 John 2, 18. He that denies the Father and Son relationship, he is an Antichrist. Enough said? We could go on and on. There's no end to it. By the way, the latest survey, and now they've taken in some of the Catholic priests along with all these Protestants, and it is now 68% of the population of America who says, we don't need Jesus. There are many ways to heaven. You say that, and you're calling Jesus a liar. For Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man, no man, no woman, no woman can come unto the God, the Father, but by me. And Paul said in Acts 4, 12, neither is there salvation in any other. There is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved, and that name is Jesus. Praise his name. His name shall be called Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. What's wrong with all these guys? Listen to Jesus again in Matthew 24, verses 5, 11, and 24. There shall be false Christs and false prophets. Jeremiah 14, 14. Yahweh, God sitting in the heavens, says, The prophets are lying prophets in my name. I have not sent them. Listen to this. I'm talking about Jesus all the time, Matthew 7, 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruit. And as I said last week, God's called me to be a fruit inspector for the Lord Jesus. And I'll uplift my Savior. I don't care what you call me. I don't care what you say about me. I'm going to be true to Jesus in this book, not to another religion that takes my Jesus apart. All right. One more thing, what happens to this crowd? He said, they're going to be blasphemers. Verse 15, 21 to 23, 
Many will say to me in that day, judgment day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, preached and witnessed and testified, and in your name cast out devils, and in your name done many wonderful works. Then will I profess unto them, I never, never knew you, you bunch of sinners, you workers of iniquity. That's the way the Lord Jesus feels. And we need an old-fashioned revival, not these services with their rock bands and lattes and nonsense and foolishness, an old-fashioned revival that Billy Graham wants to bring in November of this year, his last message to America, his warning. All right, we're going to go on here. An unexpected development. My, oh my, was it ever. Just happened as Pope Benedict XVI gave his resignation. Pope Benedict XVI, in shock, resignation, the unexpected development. The first papal resignation in 600 years, and it surprised governments, Vatican, and even his closest aides. Then the Wall Street Journal, Pope resigns in historic move, and Benedict is facing up to his frailties. He looks weak there. Yes, he certainly does, and Pope Benedict says resignation is for the good of the church. I'm going to stop right here, and I'm going to ask Jack if he could enlighten us a little bit more about this resignation. I'll this Pope has said, and I've got all the articles, and this is just since he mentioned his resignation, he said, next, I'm asking all the cardinals to pray much so that we do not get the next Pope who destroys the Catholic Church. Why? When you hear the great Bishop Sheen, who used to be the voice for Catholicism on the airwaves, he said this about the next Pope, pray that he's not the one who destroys the church. Why is that? Because in Revelation 13, 1, we have the rise of the world dictator. Verse 7 says, he has control over all kindred tongues, people, and nation, and all the world worships him. But with him, we have a false prophet, and this is what the Pope is worried about, the bad Pope. And he will make an image even to the Antichrist. And he has the two horns of a lamb, but he speaks like a dragon. The two horns of a lamb associates him with Christianity, for Jesus is the Lamb of God. John 1, 29, their dragon is Satan. Revelation 20, verse 2. Yes, and their plans, that's nothing new, Jack. Take a look at this, please, on the screen. As early as 1989, Europeans were shocked to see thousands of Muslims openly protest in the streets of Britain. France, Germany, Belgium, and the Netherlands, carrying signs with the provocative slogan, Islam, our religion today, your religion tomorrow. And then let's take a look at the spirit of the Grand Ayatollah Khomeini. And of course, he's the one in Iran. This is the same Khomeini who said in 1981, that goes back away too, friends. I say, let Iran go up in smoke, provided. Islam emerges triumphant in the rest of the world. They want to take over. Now, there are a couple more statements. Jack, perhaps you'd like to read this one, please. Supreme leader of the Islamic Revolution, Ayatollah Sayyid Ali Khamenei, announced that uprisings and movements in the Muslim countries serve as a prelude to greater developments and the rule of Islam over the whole world. And in another article I have here, he says, we're going to raise our flag over every nation on earth, including the United States of America. Let's go on. We see that the Mahdi will lead a world revolution that will institute a new world order based on the religion of Islam. The Mahdi will offer the religion of Islam to the Jews and Christians. If they accept it, they will be spared. Otherwise, they will be killed. How? And Prophet Jesus will be the executioner under Mahdi, and Islam will be victorious over all the religions. The one world religion. Now listen very carefully. The Bible teaches, and Ahmadinej out of Iran's been constantly talking about the New World Order. I always thought it was just the European Union. No, no, no. The Bible says in Revelation 17, 10, there are seven heads and ten horns. The ten horns, of course, is when they divide all the world into ten regions, like the Club of Roma's plan, and you find that in Daniel chapter 7, verses 70, 20, 24, Revelation 12, 3, Revelation 13, 1, and Revelation 17, verses 3, 7, 12, and 16. But get this, the seven heads, three of them are Islamic nations, and then others are the Europeans, and that's why Martin Luther and 
the great man Calvin of the Reform Movement, both 500 years ago taught that there would be two legs in that beast of Daniel 2 verses 31, 32, and the one leg would be Islam and the other leg Europe. So well said, Jack. Friends, you know, in this world of loneliness, <laughs> despair, rejection, there's one place that we can look and know that it's real and we can have hope, and that's in the Bible. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the Savior of the world. Jesus will come into your heart, forgive your sins. Will you open your heart to him? Jack, will you pray that prayer of salvation? I'm glad that he's not the prophet Jesus that takes life, killing people, but that he's the Savior of Christianity who gives life, eternal life. If you'll just pray this now, Lord Jesus, thank you for Calvary, for the cross, and that you are all you said you were. You're the way, the truth, and the life, yea, eternal life, Jesus. Come into my heart now. I throw all my sin, known and unknown, on you now, because you promised to save me. Jesus, come into my heart now. I pray this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Oh, if you pray that prayer, write to me. There's my address. I'll send you this little booklet, First Steps in a New Direction. Good to be forgiven. Good to have him as your Savior and walk with you every day. And here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive our wonderful offer of the week, A Place Called the Heaven by Dr. Robert Jeffries. All right, I want you to be sure and listen to Bob right now because I would want you to order this. And uh, here's our announcer, Bob. To order your copy of the book, A Place Called Heaven, with the bonus DVD, Heaven, the Eternal Home for Some, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impe Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impe Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, N9A, 6Y1. Thank you so much, Bob. I appreciate that. Now, please call or write for the wonderful offer of the week, A Place Called Heaven. It's one of the finest books I've ever read on heaven. And of course, it is by Dr. Jeffries. And I have a bonus I'm going to be sending with it when I get your order, and it is Heaven, the eternal home for some. Friends, you know, I've heard so often, let your conscience be your guide. Conscience is a safe guide only when guided by the Lord. Look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very, very much. Bye-bye.